I judge my walk today by how I walked in yesterday's enlightenment. And I don't mean yesterday. I mean when I was first born again. I judge my faith and my walk by my baptism experience, by the first week or two of my salvation. That's how I judge myself. Do I feel like I have the same passion? Do I have the same willingness to let all things go for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of, and the love of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's how I judge today. I judge today by yesterday. And if you, now some of you maybe haven't had the dramatic explosion that I had. I mean, I was not religious. I was not a church goer. I was a Catholic, I was a poor Catholic, but I, was, I, I wasn't going to church. I was 24 years old. As you all know, I was professional bodyguard, evil can evil stunt guy, the whole thing. I was not living a life that resembled anything that was righteous or church going or Christian. But my life was changed and in, probably in one in an hour, hour and a half setting, my life was totally changed. And I walked out of a Christian breakfast a different man than I walked in. And then, you know, a lot of people will say, well, according to you. But no, this it's, it was according to everybody who knew me. I had a dramatic encounter with Jesus went through deliverance, got filled with Holy Spirit, spoke in other tongues, walked out a different man. And as I read the scriptures, I was always kind of moved by King Saul because he went up the mountain to the prophets and when he came down, he came down a different man, the scripture says. Now Paul cast off, or uh, Saul, the king cast off his spirit-filled position to keep his kingship. He went after David. But the fact is, he got filled with the spirit and he came down from the hill from the prophets, a different man. The scripture says that. He came down a different man. And if that should say anything to any Christian, the same thing that happened to him can happen to you. And if you will rightly judge your enlightenment, whenever that was, maybe you didn't have a, a big, powerful enlightenment the way I did, but so then I would say, judge today's walk and today's faith by the most anointed experience that you've had in your life. Judge it by that. Because I know all of you have had that. You've all had a time or an experience where the Lord has come over you and you've just been filled with the spirit and had a tremendous encounter with Jesus. So judge today by that. And so I'll just give you some scriptures. And by the way, um, You know, Hebrews 10, 32. Says call to remembrance the former days. In which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. Call to remember. Your beginnings. Call to remembrance your beginnings. And it's an interesting thing. I find great comfort and a great inspiration when I think about 
even the first week of my salvation. I can get back into that spirit. Okay, Martin, I told Martin years ago, I said, you fulfill a place in the church that few people fulfill because he's a product of the great charismatic renewal. When were you filled with the spirit? Seventy something. Was it 75? You were in Arizona? Yeah. And see what I told him years ago, <laughs> you may not remember right now, but you'll, you'll get back to it. I told him that I said, the anointing that you came in under is your offering to the church. Just live and speak and exercise your first days in the Lord. That's all the Lord requires of you. That's all the Lord requires of any of us. That's not enough for us. We wanna, we wanna move into, you know, exhibiting other people's faith. If you will just exhibit and walk in and demonstrate your first days, if you will live in your first days, you will fulfill your calling to the church. You think about that. And by the way, I hate to bust your bubble, but that's all you have to give anyway. <laughs> so if it's not enough, then go hang yourself by the nearest tree. Can't believe he said that. <laughs> well, either get with the program or get out of the program. Yeah. You know, any of you ever watch the Triple Crown races, the horse races? Any of you ever watch that? How many of you ever seen a donkey race in that race? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we laugh. But you know what we try to do? We're trying to race in races that... Yeah. And how many of you ever seen a thoroughbred pull on a plow? Or a thoroughbred walking down the narrow path into the Grand Canyon with a load on his back? You haven't, and you won't. They're not bred for that. You know, how many have ever seen little a dog like little Stella, you know, as a police dog? <laughs> no. You know, I mean, we see that in the natural. Do you know what you're bred for? Go back to your, the days that you were enlightened. Go back to when you were born again. Go back to when you got filled with the Spirit. Just do that. Live in that. Get back to that Spirit. I touched that Spirit tonight when we were worshiping. There was a liberty and a freedom yeah. here that I, that reminded me of 1972. And you know why? Because that's what I bring. I bring that to this meeting. I bring the liberty of the charismatic renewal. So does Martin whenever he gets touched. We bring that into this. So 1 John, well, yeah, Hebrews 10, 
Remember back when you were first enlightened. Okay, then. First John. This is powerful. Verse 24. Let that, therefore, abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. Live in your beginnings. It's kind of interesting. If that which you have heard from the beginning remains in you, you shall continue in the Son and in the Father. You getting this? If that which you received in your beginnings remains in you now, you will continue in Jesus Christ and in his Father. What's the alternative? If you don't continue in the things of your beginnings, you won't remain in the Father and in the Son. You'll be under, under and in a different spirit. Do you see that? And this is the promise that he's promised us is even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that try to seduce you. Seduce you into what? Moving out of your first works. You've left your first love. Go back and do what? What's it say? Do the first works. Man, if you can get a hold of this, I say it will energize you and give you a power that you have yet to really realize except the power you had when you were first born again. But the anointing which you have received abides in you. What's he saying? The anointing that you received when you were enlightened, whenever the spirit moved on you, let me, let me just stop right here. Is there anybody here that can't remember any time in your life that the anointing moved on you can all of you you don't remember a time when okay I'll bring you back to 3816 Pine Cove standing just inside the front door with Dylan and John and you were filled with the spirit and prophesying. And you guys remember that? Do you remember that, Josh? That's what I'm talking about. Don't discount that. That's not a, a small thing. And you've had that anointing come on you in, over here, across the valley, in the back. And your familiar is reasoning so much that we lose it. Well, that's fine. The thing is, is, unless I talk about it, I'm not going to understand it. You know, what you're talking about. Because for a long time, I don't, it's like, it doesn't seem like it is, you know, talk about it not being enough. It's like, that's... You know why it's not? You know why it's not? Because you don't remain in it. You've lightly esteemed it, Josh. And the reason you've lightly esteemed, you've got other things going on in your head that are more important to you. I just got to tell you that. Well, it's like when I was in the skid steer, I told this story like four, it was like four years ago. And I was, I was working, spreading gravel on the, all across the way there. And I was seeing, when I was in the skid steer, I was just seeing myself in closed cab. 
about the flame of the Lord, whatever. It's having a good time. But I had a voice come to me and say, you really think you can do this forever? Not in the work, but like, could you really think you can sit here and skate here for the rest of your life and praise the Lord? And I paused for about two and a half seconds, and I said, out loud, I said, yeah, I can, and I will, and I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, Becca, let me ask you this, Becca. See, I knew you were going to raise your hand. Because you don't see where the Lord has moved in your life. 